Good morning, afternoon, whatever time it is that you're watching this video, Ace Gen Paper. So here is what you guys are going to do today. So you have already written a full paper one because you spent Thursday mind mapping and writing introduction. That was Thursday of last week. You spent Monday writing the body paragraphs. You spend Tuesday finishing the body paragraphs and the conclusion, so you should have a complete essay. I checked. A lot of you don't. And guess what? It is what it is. You're going to have to do today's activity regardless. So just so you know, if you didn't finish the essay and the time allotted during class, it probably means you're not going to finish the essay on the day of because it's about equal the amount of time you're going to have on the actual day of the exam. Hopefully you all didn't finish because you were too busy horsing around and talking to friends and not because it took you that long to write a full essay. I'm hoping it's the former, even though I'm also not hoping that. But regardless, it is what it is at this point. So first thing I also want to make note, you should be sitting with your table groups because I have given the exact amount for the table groups that have your assigned seats. So if you're currently sitting in a seat that's not yours, you should move right now. Looking at some of the people in different parts of the room, you know who you are. I saw your essay in the wrong folder. They should be in the same folder that I assigned them to. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds to get moving because you're in the wrong seats. OK, moving on. So here's what's going to happen today. You are going to rotate your essays or find a buddy in your table group. I don't care how you do it. If you are a larger group, it's probably going to be easier just to take one and pass it around clockwise or counterclockwise. Or if you guys want to buddy up, only at your table groups, though. Don't start moving around the room. Shouldn't see you looking at your friends across the room. Turn around. Don't look at them. They're not grading your essay. Only people at your table group are. All right. So what's going to happen is you're each going to get, and you have this in your folders. Your leader should have these. The paper that looks like this. I know it's very small on my screen. You have it in front of you, but this is a mock paper one peer evaluation. So it is going to walk through all of the paragraphs of the essay and ask you questions that you're looking for in that person's essay. So step one, you have to read the person's essay. So do that first. Read through their essay and then start going through the checklists. At the very top, you're going to write down the candidate name, candidate's name. That is the person whose essay you are grading. And then you're going to write editor's name. That is you. You write your name and editor's name. You write the person's essay you're grading in the candidate's name. Okay, so you write those names down and then you start walking through it. There's an introduction section. It tells you some questions. Yes, no, kind of. If you ever put kind of, there's always a line at the end of every section that says explain any kind of. So I know that in body paragraph one, it kind of printer got kind of wonky. And so it says explain any and then you can't really see it. It says explain any kind of. So if you circle kind of, you have to explain why you put kind of. What did they do incomplete? that made you think, yeah, they kind of did it, but they also kind of didn't. That's explanation worthy. Make sure you are explicit as explicit as possible in your comments about their essays. Uh, make sure you are actually looking for things and not trying to give them an inflated grade because that helps no one. Um, and if they don't have three body paragraphs or four body paragraphs rather, so there's four body paragraph sections, only complete the ones they have. If they wrote two body paragraphs, you're only doing body paragraph one and body paragraph two. If they have more body paragraphs, then you can also write some notes on the side if you need to. I don't think anyone would, but in case they do. Then you've got your conclusion section. The last thing you're going to do is it says the whole essay, and you have to grade it based on the Cambridge rubric, which we've looked at before, so it's not your first time seeing it. However, it's probably your first time seeing it in a while. So everyone also gets the Cambridge marking scheme because that's what they call it. They don't call it a rubric. They call it a marking scheme. It's very blurry, but I can show you it on my screen. So you're going to see. Share screen. You are going to see this. All right. Now, remember, it's a marking scheme. So there are five levels. On your paper, the first side has levels five, four, three, two, and then on the back it has level one. Hopefully no one is at level one, although looking at some of the incomplete essays, there are some level ones, but hopefully we're focused on levels five, four, three, and two. 
you're going to see uh, AO1, AO2, AO3. So those are all the learning objectives. We've talked about them before. One's about evidence. One's about how you explain and incorporate your evidence. And the other is about how you communicate in the written word. Read through the sections to make sure you understand what that section entails. So for instance, if you think the person is communicating clearly, consistently, appropriately, use a wide range of vocabulary, use the language with control and accuracy, errors of present are only for the big words, constructs a cohesive response, then they would get AO3 at a level five, so between 25 and 30. Then you look at AO2, did they do this section? Okay, maybe not, maybe they went down to here. Okay, so we check that box. And then you look at AO1, okay, they got this box. So let's say they got, just as an example, oh, can I annotate? I can. As an example, let's, oh, only I can annotate. I don't know if this is gonna actually pop up on the recording, but we're gonna try it. So let's say my candidate did AO1 at a level five, AO2 at a level four, and AO3 at a level five. Well, if you look here on the sides, they give you a range for the AO or for the marks. So it's 25 to 30. So for this one, it's probably gonna be on the low end of level five because they did get two level fives. So I would say it's probably gonna be a 25 out of 30. So this student probably got a 25 out of 30 because they did everything mostly right. The only one they draw points on is AO2. So when you're looking at the marking scheme, look at it that way, all right? So if, let's do another example. It's a, a, a more complicated one. So let's say you have a candidate who didn't really do a lot of good application of information. So they got an AO3 down, or a, a level three for AO1, a level two for AO2, or a level four, sorry. And then they got a level five because they're like super clear in their writing. That's probably gonna place them in the level four section. And it's probably going to put them somewhere midway in the level four section. So um, I would say that's going to be like a 21 or a 22 out of the, the 30 marks. So they'd be a level four. OK, so use your judgment on that. Um, if they score only in the level twos and level threes, there's no way they're a level four or five. So please be honest with your with your marking scheme. And you're going to actually write down how they did in each AO section. So that's on the paper that you have in front of you, and then you're going to give them a total. And then the last thing you'll do is write some comments as to about why you gave them that score. All right, clearing all that up. I don't know how to get back to the normal tools. OK. No, how do I? Now I'm stuck in annotation mode. See, so I don't try things in the middle of a recording, but that's OK. So you're going to go through that and you're um, going to give them a grade based on what Cambridge would give them. You need that for tomorrow because I'm going to be there tomorrow and I'm going to be referencing those grades. So please make sure you have that tomorrow and that it's fully graded. OK. All right. Starting annotations. No, I don't want to start annotations. Stop annotations. I don't want to stop them. Oh, no, the laser pointer. OK, this is this is going so fantastically. All right, now what we're going to do, 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 do. I'm going to get out of the annotation section. Pausing for a second to figure this out more. <sighs> Let me stop sharing and then I'll start sharing again. That's going to work. OK, we'll do that. All right, so. Now what I want to look at is the um, marking scheme for the question you were asked. So remember, the prompt you were answering was that science has caused more problems than it has solved. Discuss. And this is what the AP scorers wrote for what they were looking for. Now, of course, it doesn't include everything. Some people have different ideas that can be incorporated as long as there's valid evidence behind it. But for the most part, these are what they think people will answer the question with. So first, answers are likely to discuss the role of science in solving problems. Second, consider the extent to which science causes problems. So again, that is what the question's asking, that it causes problems or it solves problems. There should be some discussion there. There has to be. If there's not that, they definitely can't score the maximum amount of points. Third, they have to make a judgment based on the considerations of the evidence and argument put forward. Again, that should be in their conclusion. That should be nowhere else in their paper but their conclusion. So if it's not in their conclusion, put that in their comments that they need to put their, their judgment in the conclusion because it was a discuss question. 
Uh, and then they give you a, a listing here of different examples that might be included. So negative impacts of science progress in some areas of the environment. So environmental impacts, the relationship of science with big business and other interest groups, right? So talking about how um, technology and patents, things like that potentially. The more ethical problems raised by science and how these are reacted to. Should we test on animals if it's going to solve cancer? That's a question of, of moral and ethical um, consideration. The challenges to religious belief proposed by the progress of science. Um, so looking at the history of how science has actually changed some religious, not texts, so to speak, but religious belief systems. Looking at Galileo, looking at all of, uh, the Sir Isaac Newtons and all that kind of stuff. Um, Science as an agent for creativity and innovation and problem solving and logical thinking. Science having enabled group uh, progress in numerous aspects of human endeavor. The influence of science in what we read, watch, and listen to. And science has caused problems, but it has often been able to find the answers to those problems. That may not be the conclusion you came to, and that is okay as long as you supported it with evidence. All right, so go through the marking scheme. Of the peer editing, you have the whole period for this, so please take your time on it. You only have this period, though, so don't take that much time on it. Make sure you're being honest. Make sure you're actually working. Don't just spend the whole time talking about what you're planning on doing over the weekend. Instead, spend the time helping each other do better on paper one. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. And that is all. Sit in your assigned seat. Stop moving around the room. And also don't be loud because I can hear you. Like almost every conversation, I can hear you so clearly through this wall. Have a great day.